He's unpredictable. He's relentless. He's fearless. He's smart. He's a jerk. Oh, man, what a jerk. How would you describe Kirk Minahan? He's talented. He's blunt. He's complicated. He's the fakest tough guy I know. He's honest. A self-proclaimed weenie. He's angry. He's actually a good guy. He's a psycho big mouth prick. I wish we had more Kirk Minahans. How would you describe Kirk Minahan? Combustible. Unpredictable. Venomous. Chesty. Obnoxious. Selfish. Polarizing. Pompous. Enough about me. Let's get to the show. It's Kirk Minahan's Enough About Me. My favorite radio show of all time is Mike and the Mad Dog. And my favorite radio personality is Chris Mad Dog Russo. I listen to him every day with Mike. I listen to him on the weekends when he's by himself. And now I listen to him on Sirius XM. He is by far my favorite radio personality and my favorite guest on the Dennis O'Callaghan Show. And I was thrilled to have him join me. And the first thing I asked him is a question everyone's been asking here the last couple of weeks. All right, I'll just, I'm just going to start out by asking it. Will Chris Russo and Mike Francesa do a radio show together every day uh, again in the future? Uh, Kirk, I, I wouldn't expect it for the time being. Um, uh, you know, Mike's got a Mike's under contract. Who's going to pay all that money to do it? Um, so, I mean, Mike's got two more years to go. Uh, I don't know what Mike's plan is when he. I don't know if Mike is going to want to retire. I don't know what his deal is going to be at that point. That's a year and a half, still a long way off. You don't believe he. You don't believe he's done though, right? I mean, uh, I, I think Mike will dabble in something. Um, I think he will dabble in something, maybe a podcast. Uh, you know, maybe something once a week. I don't know if Mike will work every day, especially not in the summertime. I mean, Mike, uh, Mike does work now in the summertime. He is definitely not going to work June fifteenth through Labor Day. Mike is not going to work beginning next uh, in two th- from two thousand and eighteen on. Mike will not work middle of June through Labor Day. Uh, that, that I can I, that you just know, Mike, and I, I'd be surprised. Uh, but I do think he'd do something. Yes. Uh, would I would I rule out anything? I would not rule it out, but I wouldn't rule it in in the next in the foreseeable future. Let's get through this reunion show in good shape, uh, sort of reminisce, talk some sports, do a good show for the audience at Radio City, and then we'll go from there. It seems like, in the, and, I, and, and as you know, I mean, I've been doing the show with John and Jerry for a couple of years, so we've got to know each other a little bit. You know by now what a huge fan I am of, of you on Sirius. No, I know. You're a big fan. On Sirius. And, and huge Mike and the Mad Dog fan. Grew up listening to Mike and the Mad Dog. When I was a Ford, I listened to Mike and the Mad Dog. It does seem like in the evolution, as with all shows, as I've now learned very well, there are ups and there are downs, there are peaks and there are valleys. And right now in the russo francesa relationships, it seems like we are uh, in a peak, no? Oh, no question about it. Well what, done, what, what, what changed? Well, what changes? Um, well, I mean, I think, um, you know, I think the fact that uh, we've been apart for seven or eight years, so when you're apart after a long marriage, uh, you, you forget about the reasons of why you broke up, and you spend more time thinking about the reasons why you got together. Uh, I think that's part of it. I think the um, the the ticket the ticket success of the Radio City thing. I think the fact that uh, they sold out so quickly. I think that's got something to do with it. Uh, the fact that you know we realize, wow, the fans do love us. I think that's got something to do with it. I think the fact that uh, the Francesca come a week ago down there at uh, Irving Plaza, right, and you know the, all the fans who were there that day, I think that's got something to do with it. Uh, old age probably has a little something to do with it. I think the fact that you, that we both have had modest success alone has probably had something to do. With it. I think there's a lot of factors. Uh, I think the big one probably is the idea that we must have did something right after all these years where, you know, the fans still want to hear what we have to say together. So I think that's made us think, you know, geez, well, let's get along and do a good job here because the fans crave it. So I think that's the big thing more than anything else. But, uh, but th- okay, I understand that. But since you went to Sirius and since Mike went solo, there have been, in that period, some down points. I have to think. The A Rod thing was not. Yeah, a good... I think probably no. I didn't talk to Mike about the A Rod. So, so let me let me ask you this: What would be the longest you guys went without talking? Uh, off... I would say a, probably a, well at least a year. You figure we talked to each other at the at, at the um, at Super Bowls. Right. Uh, uh, I, my father passed away in 2013. He, he was, was very then. and he was very emotional it, about that. Yeah, he was. So we talked about that. Um, I, I didn't hear Mike on the air. Mike was emotional about that Very, on the air. Oh, he started. Uh, dog, you started. You never heard it. He started. Somebody tweeted at me. He started a show. One o'clock, one o five. He did twenty minutes on it. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, Tony was one of the great characters in the history of the show. <laughs> People loved him. Oh, he was the greatest. And, and Mike and my father always had a good chemistry because of the Yankees. And I had Mike do a reading at my father's mm-hmm. memorial service in New Canaan, Connecticut, on that Friday of Memorial Day weekend. So, I mean, I think that uh, we had a little connection. We had a big connection there. Um, but it's, you know, I was on with Mike's 25th anniversary of FAN. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- there are times that you were on. Uh, the A Rod thing caused, you know, I, I didn't talk to him about it, but I took the opposite side. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's very anti Seelig slash Manford. Um, you know, I'm not. So I think that probably, uh, we haven't talked about it, but I, I, you'd probably not like to get involved in that because that will cause a little friction. Um, so those two, the, the baseball, Mike just seems to be a little distant with the, and I have not discussed it with him. I swear I haven't. But Mike seems to be a little distant that, with the powers that be with baseball. Um, and I am closer to baseball, uh, being, well, partly because of this MOB show, uh, partly because, you know, I always kind of liked uh, Manford and, and Selig, and partly because I never liked A-Rod. So you throw in all that, I, I think there's a little disconnect there. Um, you know, uh, probably I would be a little bit more anti-Nick if I was on right now than Mike willing to give Phil Jackson and company maybe a touch of a pass. Mm-hmm. Do you listen a lot? Do you listen a lot? Uh, you, know, I, you know, I do when I'm not, a, when I'm not on. Uh, I don't listen too much when, I, when I'm definitely off or I have a shorter show or I have a Timmy basketball game and I'm driving home all the time. I will put them, I will listen. But generally speaking, I'm on at the same time Mike's on, and I commute by a train. So I don't listen to anything, even us, uh, I don't listen to via the train. So, but, I, but people tell me what's going on. I mean, you know, it's not like people are always going to ask me what I think, how I react when something's going on. So when, I, when Mike says something, I might disagree with people, say, Doggy, what do you think? They tweet me. Uh, people play it for me. So there's no way you can stay. Uh, you, 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 the, the, you always are connected. Uh, and I'm always gonna, Mike and I are always going to be connected for the, for the rest of our lives from a media standpoint. There's no other there's no other way around it. One thing, I've, it is. one thing I've learned is when you get into fights off the air and you're not talking off the air, it bleeds onto the air. And, yeah, how, no. and how I find it bleeds onto the air is almost an opposite thing. It's you pretend like you like each other even more than you usually do, and then you wind up having a big fight over something that's so small and so irrelevant, it just blows up. It's happened with me and John a couple of times. It's happened with me and Jerry a couple of times. I've seen it with John and Jerry a couple of times, with the producers a couple of times. And with you guys, I think it spilled out over some Yankee Stadium fight. And it was like 2000, right toward the end. Well, I, yeah, that was the bathroom thing. We yelled no, at right, right. about the Yankee yes. Stadium bathroom. That wasn't, we, we were not getting along then. You're right. So that was, uh, you know, that was, uh, it was actually funny. But we were right. not getting along. We had a lot worse fights what was earlier. The lo- what, was the log- what was the longest you guys went without talking off the air? You know what no, I mean? I mean, that fight we had in 2006, I believe it was. Would you go weeks? Oh yeah, easy. Oh couple my God! I mean, we'll go. We'll go a couple of days, and then we'll have a blow. Oh no, over. no, a couple of months. How do you? How do you do that? Nah, you learn how to do it. That that week. What those, happened then? That's when we we didn't we didn't we didn't go to Indianapolis for Game Six of the Knicks Pacers. Right. And I wanted to go. Mike did not. And uh, I was annoyed by it, and I probably uh, I showed that annoyance on the air. That was bad. Uh, that was probably in mid-May. <laughs> I did not talk to Mike on or off the air until his wedding, and he had no choice but to invite me. He had to invite me. Uh, well, when was that? I, when was the wedding? Uh, the mid late July. So you didn't talk for for almost three months. Yep. So you go okay. to break. So so you know uh, you give the number. You know, and then and, and, and we will get your calls. F A N. Boom. Red light goes off, and you would sit there for, for yep. six seven minutes. No not talk. talk. Oh, that not is talk. Jesus. That is rough. Would you leave the studio? Uh, I forget how we did it. Who was your, who was your, who was your, was the producer the go-between? Or? Yeah, and we put the producer in a tough spot there because at that time the producer wasn't Bob Gelb who produced our first nine, ten years. Right. The, uh, you know, after we, after Bob left, it was a different cast. Well, it was Carlin, right? Yeah, and then... Carlin and Mark Malusis and, oh, you know, it's, it was a Chris, younger. Chris, three months? Jesus. Yeah, well, well, that one was a bad one. That's the worst, uh, uh, that the worst one? Uh, the probably the lengthiest. I mean, remember that was late spring anyway, so we weren't going to see each other for a little while. So that carried. I mean, you know, so that had a little something to do with it. We've had four. We had four or five of those like that over a period of time. (laughs) But you know, 
Uh, it's, uh, we haven't had any fights in the last eight years, and we have gotten along superbly uh, during this thing here. And I, you, you have to. I mean, you can't be an idiot. Right. I mean, you're raising over a million dollars. You got to make sure that you everybody loves each other. And 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 Mike and I, I again, um, people love to hear about our arguments. Love it. We got along. We got along a lot better than people think. Yeah, but people it's, don't. It's, but, people it's, don't it's, but people don't want to hear that. That's exactly. You know, I it actually it it actually um, increases our our popularity that we fought so much. No question. What's well, it? You know, that's how the Stern playbook too. I mean, that people like that drama. They just they they can't. They help like themselves. they can't get enough of it. They I mean, I, I get, I, Chris, yeah. I must have I must have read that New York story three times. In the, the New Yorker? Yes, the New, I'm hey, sorry, guy New Yorker. I did a good job. I oh. did a good job at that. Voluma is that is that a true story? So. Car- a true story Chris Carlin tells. He walks into a hotel room in Indianapolis. You yeah. guys are sitting there. You're watching the end of the horse whisper. Yeah. And you say to him, it, it, you, you had to, he had to leave. He had to leave. And, and, and he says, dog, it was the right move. Is that a true story? Uh, no, that's a uh... – Oh yeah, yeah, I think that was. <laughs> and, and, you know, Mike loved the horse whisper because it's horses. You know, Mike loves the horses. <laughs> right. So, and I love the movie Redford. Uh, I mean, I, I go, Johansson. I mean, uh, the movie was a great movie. Oh uh, well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I liked it, and Mike loves it because he loves he loves trainers. He loves the track. But do, do you think so there was a good connection there? Do you think you could? Let's just say, let's just play the game out. Put, put finances and all this stuff aside. If Mike came up to you and said, "Listen, dog, yeah, I, I could definitely, I could definitely do it." 2018, you know, whatever, April 1st, I want to start doing the show with you. Five days a week, we'll each be off, you know, eight weeks a year, or whatever. You feel like you could slide back in, and there'd be no, all that drama would be gone, and everything well, would be all right. I, I don't know about that. There, there would be the occasional drama. I'm, I'm a little more. Uh, I think the maturation, the fact that we've been away now for eight years. I'm in my 50s. Mike's 60, 60 something. Uh, I, I think I'm a little more mature than I probably was 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. So I think I would understand how to handle it better. And Mike, same thing on his end. Uh, so if, uh, understand each his personality. Right. So I think from that standpoint, uh, it would be it, it would be something that we could deal with. Now remember, you got to remember one thing, Kirk. Mm-hmm. I don't love Mike loves talking about the New York teams. I am not a you know I forget football. Football's uh, on its own because you don't have to, you can do all the teams. You don't want to talk. You don't want to talk about the Mets every day. I'm not into the Yankee. I'm not right. into the Yankee lineup. Right. You know, I'm not into talking. To, I'm not into the Yankee 25th man in their roster. Right. Uh, you know, I'm not into breaking down Carmelo Anthony and his. You know, whatever he says, we got to magnify and talk about for 40. But hours I got. I, I got to think though. You the mi- content sometimes bores me. You, but you miss a big Monday after a, a, a Giants collapse. Absolutely right. The, the, there are days. That I definitely missed the camaraderie that the two of us had in a in a in a situation where we can break down a team, as you said, a falling apart, big loss, firing a firing a coach, the Buffalo game in Week 17, Jets, right? Uh, that kind of thing, I definitely miss because you don't get that at serious because there's not enough people who are going to call me about the Jets Bills. They're going to call Mike. They're going to call uh, Fan. They're going to call Benigno. They're going to call that crew. They're not going to call serious. They're not going to call serious XM. Do you? So you miss that hometown flavor, right? That uh, that a local, like for instance, if you went to Sirius Kirk and you're, if you like the Patriots or not, yeah, and you know the champion, and you know, forget championship game. Championship game's different. Yes, because everybody's right. Focused everyone's on that. everyone's doing it. Uh, but a regular season, you know, uh, I'll give you an example: the Patriots Chiefs game from two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you wanted to go on the air on Tuesday. You're not doing five hours on Patriots Chiefs on Sirius. Right, I'm Fox. bouncing around the league. I'm doing college football. I'm You're doing not doing this. that. You're not doing Patriots Chiefs, and you would miss that. Do you miss FM? Do you, I mean, you're at Sirius now, and I, I, listen, I listen. I'm a subscriber. I'm a Sirius subscriber for like 13 years. Are you comfortable at Sirius, or do you do you miss radio? I, it's 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 two different worlds. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, or is it not? I, it, it, radio is still radio overall. Uh, I love the I love the things that I can do here uh, that you cannot do at uh, at a local. Radio I mean, do you station. like doing two hours of college football on a Tuesday? Uh, I try not to do two hours but of it. Know, but you know what I mean? Do you like? I know, of course, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, there are days, but there are days that you have to do a topic to generate some uh, a spark with the audience that you don't have to do it, say. E I or F A M. Mm-hmm. I can I can all I can roll out the balls and I can do Met rotation Yankee lineup, 
uh, you know, what's up with the Knicks, Red Sox, and or and Sandoval. I can do that from the King if, uh, every every day at EI at um, and at FAN and never have a problem. You cannot do that here. So you have to get on. You have to understand that coming in. And there are days where you miss that. There are also days you love not being in that situation. So it goes both ways. Oh, now, now, for, it, instance, right. for instance, today i got a million things I can do. I can do the Serena thing with women's tennis. Mm-hmm. Obviously, i got all the NCAA games. i got Adam LaRoche. I mean, today i got a thousand things. You know, Ortiz yelling at the boss, uh, yelling at people, screaming about, you know, uh, pimping home runs. Right. I mean, today you got a million things. If you're on New York radio today, I mean, you're probably going to break down a lot of them. Well, you'll do some of that, but you're not doing a tennis. You're not doing Adam LaRoche. You're not doing Ortiz. You're doing, you know, Sabathia and the Yankees' fifth starter. When is your when is your deal up at Sirius? Uh, late this year. Late th- oh, late this year. Yep. And do you think you'll still be there? I would be surprised if I'm not. Oh, so you're so you're anticipating moving forward, sticking there, and doing your. your I'm thing. anticipating it. I mean, uh, you know, I would I I, I would be surprised. Um, I would anticipate it. You've had, now, no, you've I, had no, nothing. I, not, nothing has been really discussed as of yet, and I don't want to speak for them because they have to obviously, you know, they have to want you back. And so it goes both ways, and you know how it always works. Mm-hmm. Uh, the romance of the free agent is always a lot more significant than retaining the free agent. Just ask George Steinbrenner. Right. I mean, he spends a lot more money getting Reggie than he does keeping Reggie Jackson. I mean, it's the same thing in, in any walk of life. Getting the big, getting the star is you know more juice for anybody than it is retaining that star. But I would be absolutely, I would be pretty darn surprised if uh, you know we don't figure something out. I think Sirius likes me and I love Sirius. So I would think we would that doesn't you know that doesn't eliminate the idea that when Mike's deal is up we can figure something out. I think that could be something separate. I wouldn't eliminate that as a possibility, but I would be surprised if I'm not here at Sirius. When you say something separate, what what does that mean? Well I don't know, maybe something once a week. Uh, you know, once Mike's contract's up, some sort of combination of Mike and a man. I would not be shocked about that. But again, Mike would probably have to come to Sirius because it sounds like CBS is selling all their radios. They stations. are, yeah. So I, mean, I don't think they would have me run over there. So, I mean, it would have to be Mike on this, ter- on this turf more than any other turf. And I don't know how Mike would feel about that. I don't think Mike's actually thought too much about it, to be honest with you. But I would not rule it out. I would not rule it out. You'd never rule something like that out. Would you agree that you guys together are better than each of you individually? I think uh, it's not so much what I think about that. It's what the fans think about that. And I do agree that I think the fans probably think we're better uh, together than, than separately. It's hard. I, 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 I Listen, before I was on um, the week uh, with John and Jerry, I did a lot of weekends for a couple of years. So I remember I used to do uh, a Saturday show on the weekends. That fan, I mean, there's... There's no way around it. It is a it's a different feel. It's a different. I know you incorporate the producer and Tori no, and all those guys. Feel. It's a but, different feel. But it's a it's a it's it's a it's it's a hard thing to master, isn't it? It's a different feel. Um, uh, I, there's, there's, I, I can see how the listener would enjoy it more with the two of us. I think both hosts are fifty fifty on it. I think sometimes both hosts like us together. I like working with somebody. I think sometimes the hosts like being along. I mean, again, there are times I can do tennis today if I wish. Sure. On Ray Moore, I Mike would not be interested in that. Uh, you know, Mike can do Sabathia fifth man in the rotation today, and I would not be interested in that. Oh, okay. this is, no, Chris, this is good because I'm actually this is interesting to me. So our, our the way we'll set it up is we'll talk a little bit during the day and we'll get a, a, a rundown at night. We do a morning show, so it's different. We'll come in early and kind of say what's cooking. How would you and Mike over Never. the years set Never. up a show? Never, never set it up that way. So you had no, thought, so you had no idea. Mike had no idea what you were going to say at one hundred and four. Well, we, we we both knew what we were going to. We both knew what the top. I mean, of generally, the day were. But, but my point is, let's say it's a day where there's two or three B stories and there isn't an A story. Who would grab the reins and say we're going this way? Uh, at one oh, well, when the music was playing at one oh three, I said, Mike, where you want where you, where you want me to go here? And he told me. Let's say it was, uh, you know, uh, they said, ah, let's do the Jets and Giants. They both lost, Mike. Which way you want me to go? Ah, let's do the Jets. For, all right, we'll do the Jets. you got to be amenable. And I would let Mike make that call. So he would call, then, so he would call the shots on that. Uh, yeah, and then, and then we do the uh, – there's a perfect example because it's not often where you'd have a major debate with it. But both Jets and Giants on a Sunday would be, would be the way to – you know, the Yankees and the Mets, the regular season – 
there's very rarely a scenario where you'd go with both, where mm-hmm. both would be equal in standing on a particular day. Uh, the Knicks regular season over the Nets would always take precedent. Uh, I would say that question would arise with a giant jet loss or win on a Monday in the fall. And, you know, let's assume the drama of both games are relatively equal. Equal, sure. Uh, I would say, Mike, which way you want me to go here? Because you know you're going to get the both of them anyway. Sometimes you say, Doggy, up to you, whatever you want. Or sometimes you say, ah, let's do the Jedi. Whatever he'd want to do, I'd do. I would take his cue. And then we'd save the other team for a little bit later on. I was very good at pacing the show, of, of saving those topics that we had in our hip pocket for later. Let's exhaust this one, then we'll go somewhere else. Let's exhaust that, and then we'll go somewhere else. I was good at spacing out the five hours properly. How about when? How about it? You know, let's say. And it's... so that's what I. And so I kind of directed it from that standpoint. Right. And I would take Mike's lead. If Mike wanted to go here, we do this because I know if Mike wants to play Backstreets in the middle of the set, I know I'm going to get the Thunder Road anyway. So <laughs> right. 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 So, but at three forty-five, if you're dying on the vine, you might have something in your pocket and throw it out there. Uh, absolutely. No, I would probably not do it at three forty-five. Well, whatever. You know. What I, I would mean. do it right. at the top of the hour, right. four o'clock, or, or, or an hour, But but yes, absolutely. How do you think of I mean, you listen to? to Mike. And I'm going to have to do a little of that. I'm going to have to do a little of that uh, at that reunion. So show you're, as well. essentially, essentially, what you're going to do here at the reunion show, which is uh, Thursday or no? It's the thirtieth. Thirtieth. So it's a week from Wednesday. Right. So you will do a Mike and the Mad Dog show. Is that what it's going to be? I I, I think it's essentially going to be a Mike and the Mad Dog show. I think it's going to be partly reminisce. I think it's going to be a mix. I think it's going to be reminisce. I think it's going to be a little up to date now. You got obviously the. Uh, you got the over unders in baseball. You can do the final fours that <laughs> right. weekend. So I mean, you got two or three things that are you know the NBA. Who do we like? Who's going? I mean, you got those topics. The Spurs used to be big fights with me and Mike about the Spurs. He mm-hmm. loved the Spurs. I never did. So there were big fights about that. And I would think we will do some of that uh, in the course um, of the uh, of the night. Now remember, we have a ready made audience. Ninety-nine percent of that audience is going to know exactly where we're coming from. Of course, and we can basically say this: we can argue about the sky for three hours, and they'd like it. So that is a big advantage. Uh, but I think we will do a little fifty-fifty, did, reminisce, and obviously some stuff with the um, with current stuff. Did it ever bother you that over the life of the show? And I understand. Listen, you're, you're self-deprecating, and that's I think maybe your best quality. But did it ever bother you that you sort of had to play the boob? To, to, to Francesca's sort of know-it-all. Like, you would set him up for ratings questions. You would set him up for this. You would set him up for that. It seemed like Francesca kind of had to be the guy who was sort of the authority. Does that make sense? I, I think it bothered me. I think it bothered me. I think it bothered me for... Um, I think it bothered me for a long time. Um, I, I, think I, got, I think it bothered me the first period of doing the show, as everybody kind of looked at me as a town clown, right? Uh, as a goofball, and uh, and Mike is the other way. I think it definitely bothered me for the first five, six years. I think after that, I was okay. I was fine with it. But I, but I do think, you know, that I think that's going to bother you no matter what. But uh, it didn't bother me in the last five, six years. Not at all. Uh, because I knew, I mean, after you spend 15 years there, you've got to figure that they're going to know that you know something, know something about sports. Right. Um, and I know Mike always knew that. So, I mean, it, it, it did bother we never, we never one thing about mm-hmm. me and Mike Kirk that you have to keep in mind and what we liked. We both knew how to challenge each other. And, you know, I, I, you know, I could challenge Mike, and he knew that I had a good basis of thought. And Mike could challenge me if he so desired, and I, could, and, and, and I would get into it too. So he knew that I could reach him on his level. Well, there's definitely a... a and, and, and there's not many people who can do that right. with Mike. There's and definitely... He knew, and he knew I could... I mean, people can do it with certain sports. You right. know, Nance can do it with golf and college basketball. Yeah. Uh, you know, a certain, uh, certain analysts that he loves could do it in those specifics. You know, uh, Van Gundy could do it in the NBA. But I could do it with all the sports. And I think that I think that was important to, because I was able to do that, and I think that I think he enjoyed that. But for all the all the sports talk, and we do some sports talk, we do other stuff too. You have to know. I mean, if I ask, you know, my brother in law, who's a massive, he's a firefighter in New York, massive Mike and the Bad Dog fan. I was. Other friends of mine, uh, Mike Manansky's on the station, huge fan. You must know that if you ask people what's your favorite Mike and the Mad Dog moment, it's not going to be sports. 
No, I know, something goofy. Yeah, some dumb or some movie argument or something that makes no sense or something. Uh, you know, it's going to be something goofy. Uh, I, I agree. It, it's very rarely going to be sports, which is amazing. And that's, and that's why I like the show so much. Uh, you know, and that's where Mike and I were good. Mike and I knew how to be goofballs when we wanted to be goofballs. Now, when we were fighting, we were not goofballs. No, but it was always funny, like, you know, Francesca would do, you guys would do Oscar talk, and Francesca would act like he was, you know. Uh, oh, they're funny. Like, funny. Yeah, but, or like, a, you know, this movie critic, and he would, that, that, Francesca would never admit that he didn't know something. And there was always something kind of funny about that. Uh, I, yeah, Kirk, I'm with you 100%. I, I think I was able to bring out that element. With oh, definitely. Mike. No question. And I think he's probably missed that over the years. Um, but I think that um, I, I, do, I do. That's an excellent point you made. Uh, I do think if you ask the Mike and the Mad Dog fan their fondest memory of Mike and me, it's not gonna, it might be pink Cadillac with the Yankees winning a World Series in 96. Right. But for the most part, it might be away from sports. I think that's a good point. Very now, good point. Now, we've battled over the last year. You've come on, and God bless you for doing it. Cause guys, About the deflate you know, guys, yeah. guys won't call in anymore. You know, you're the only, one of the two or three guys left that will come on and argue about it. Do you feel, as time has gone on, and maybe you've read more and more about it, do you feel like the NFL might have gone too far in this? Uh, here's what I would say. Four games, probably too far. Uh, but you, did it, say, you did say superb job by Goodell when they gave him four games initially. I know. Well, I liked it at the time. I was probably pretty enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, here are the five things that I would say on the flake case that, that I don't think any Patriot person could dispute. Let me hear them. The Patriots cheated once before, so why should they get the benefit of that? But that not, that's not relevant to Deflategate, though, but go ahead. But the, but the organization did cheat. Okay, go ahead. We can't dispute that. They have a history of pushing the envelope. Well, that's I know, but, but, but that's but, – but a... Well, the, I mean, you're telling me Brady didn't think that Deflategate was wrong when he was looking at film of, of walkthroughs? Spygate, you mean. Spygate. Well, I don't – but you think he was looking at – when he was what? Well, when they showed you the uh, – did, didn't the coaching staff look at the Rams' walkthrough? Well, that was discredited. That, that, that report was discredited. That does, I, don't that, that, Marshall, that, I don't know if Marshall – I don't know if Marshall – Well, uh, do, you think, do you think he might have a dog in the fight, potentially? That, if, 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 it wasn't, if it wasn't helpful for the Patriots, why would they do it? I, I'm not disputing that they, they did it. The walkthrough thing has never been uh, proven, but go ahead. But uh, oh, that's one. Get to two. Uh, number two, um, why, did this, why did Brady destroy his cell phone? That's a that's a totally fair question. Now he no, now, now, now he will tell you because he's a celebrity and he wants oh, to get bullshit. rid of this phone. Well, okay. but but I'm, I, but I'm telling you that's but I'm giving you the Brady argument. Uh, but, that's Brady, but, but, Brady. But, but, but let me but let me just say this. You're right. I think that's a fair question. But I'll say this. Wells told Brady that he did not need the cell phone. Didn't need it. Wells told him that. That's on the record. That's in the transcript. That's in the court document. Wells said to Brady, "We don't need your cell phone." Okay, number two. Why did the three, why did yeah. the train three? Why did the flatter? Why did the uh, whatever his name is Jimmy Stanley? What's his name? Did you say Jimmy Stanley? What is his name? <laughs> Jim McNally. Uh, Jim McNally. Yeah. Why did he? Why did he call, call himself, himself the deflator? deflator? Uh, again, good question. They're going to tell you this because he deflated the footballs. Oh, that's, now, that's, now, that's the reason. But no, but the but the, but the Patriots will tell you is he deflated it down to the lowest possible legal number, which again I think is a fair argument to have because it hasn't been discredited anywhere. All right, that's number three. Number okay. four, why did Brady call the other guy in the office there after he did that interview on EEI the Monday after the championship? Not with game? us, yeah. Why, why did he call— uh, All of a sudden, he's, what's the guy's name? Jastrzemski. Jastrzemski. Yeah. Why did all of a sudden Brady, who didn't speak to him for six months, if I'm not mistaken, via phone? Well, he had talked to him in the previous six months, text, dog. Text, dog, dog was, was text. Dog, it was, text? Dog, was, dog, it was in January. He was with him the whole season. He had talked to him in the previous well, you six get the, months. I don't think he picked up the phone and called uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but I would say this. if Let's just say that you were Brady. Oh. Let's, let's, let's just play this game. Let's say you're Brady, okay? You're on with me and John and Jerry, and you get hammered with these questions on Monday morning about Deflategate. Wouldn't your natural reaction be to call somebody, call that guy, and say, "What the fuck? Minutes. What what the fuck is going on?" Twenty five. Right after he gets off the phone. But do you, when you really? Get the, no, that would be your first. If you're that, if you're that concerned about it, yes. If it's not that big a deal to you, wait till you get to the stadium. Why? You can call him on the way to the stadium. Why not? That that uh, that's enough for you to convict those four. But no, days? I got more. I got. Go I'm just getting started. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I got a lot more than that. Why did Why did the Why were the footballers taken from the referee's office? They were taking them with with Coleman knowledge. He walked right out of it. He walked right out of there with them. No, but the, but Coleman couldn't find a football for fifteen minutes. Yeah, McNally took them out to the field. Why he's not supposed to do that? What are you talking about? He's done it before. There's been no. Well, why, 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 well, why first, was, first of all, would you agree that Coleman did not do a great job? 
Uh, you know, if you ask the NFL, <laughs> they didn't do anything <laughs> wrong with it. Really? I mean, he, uh, yeah, I was he, with them, and I dog, was with them on Monday night. Dog, they, I know. They, we they we heard nothing. you. We heard you. I heard you. God, you yucking up with Goodell. Oh, I loved it. Uh, but, the time but, of your but, life. Why did he take the footballs into the bathroom? Because he had to go, he had to urinate. Is that impossible? So he took the football. Uh, he, well, let me let me ask you this. Let me. Okay, that's a, that's a good question. Let me let me counter it real quick. So Tom Brady is obsessed with this, right? You would agree? Would you agree that Brady that that McNally's not going to go rogue, right? That, that, that Brady would have to know about it, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. I Your guess be. is that if it's Tom Brady, uh, McNally's not going to go rogue. So McNally was in there for ninety seconds, just enough, just enough time to let the air out of the balls, but in really in no way to govern how much air he takes out of each ball. So Tom Brady is so obsessed with the amount of uh, air that's taken out of each football, but he's okay with McNally just going in there and just sort of doing it, bang, 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 and doing the sloppy job. Does that, that make sense? Uh, you know, fair, fair point. But he did, he did, he did. Uh, from what I was gathered, he was not supposed to take the footballs out of the officials. That is office. not that is not part of his his job requirement. That's true, but he's done it. And he t- but, but 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 that day he did take. No, the he's done it. He's, out done, of the he's done it in the past too, and other guys have done it in the league in the past Champion, as well. Again, again, uh, I know Walt Anderson for from what it, from what I've heard, he did run around. Where the hell are the footballs? Where'd they go? Well, here's here here's and the, the guy pro- took the football. Here's the problem: is 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 what the referee should have done in that situation. Then, if there was some chaos, he should have gone in there and said, "Hey." We're not using these footballs. Let's use, you know, let's use twelve other footballs. We shouldn't use these footballs. That's I mean, he, fair. He if totally, you want to say that Ward Anderson totally screwed up, completely screwed up. And here's, here's the thing: there let me be, ask you another question. Yeah, good. Why would Roger Goodell want to suspend the face of his league for four games if there was nothing to it? Well, you just told me there's not enough to suspend him for four games. Well, I mean, well, so by, but, you so, can so, argue so, that but, all you want. Two so, games, but, but, one so, game. But so by your why ar- would you suspend him? Well, why? Would, but but your argument is that he suspended them more than you think he deserves it. So well, Goodell, I, I would have given him two games. So Goodell, so, so by your argument, Goodell is more than comfortable to suspend him for one hundred percent more than you would. But he's not comfortable to do it for four games. Uh, well, but, but, why, well, you got to answer that question. You got to answer that question. Roger Goodell, Roger Goodell, Roger Goodell. Chris, you asked the question. I'll answer it. You asked the question. I'll answer it. So so here's the answer to your question. I believe the Van Atta story at the end, which is they don't they think that Goodell covered up for Kraft and Spygate, which I think is totally possible, and they had to punish somebody. He couldn't nail Belichick because it wouldn't stick. He couldn't nail Kraft on this, although he wound up doing that because it wouldn't stick. So Brady made sense. He went after Brady, and I think and I think you'd agree that appease the other owners in the league. Goodell doesn't care about what the fans think. His job is to please the owners. The owners wanted the Patriots to get fucked on this. They had didn't, to find somebody. The owners- it was Brady. Weren't the owners relatively satisfied that they got fined a million dollars and lost the first? In the no, third no, no, absolutely not. Well, how do you know that? Did you talk to them? Well, did I talk to each individual owner? Yeah, did you talk to any no. owner? Well, if you talked to how many owners have you talked to during this process? Well, I talked about nine of them. Did when? you talk to any of these the, owners? The other night, you talked to nine owners. Yeah, I all talked to them. And what did they say? Uh, they said that's ridiculous. We What's wanted, ridiculous? They said that we wanted Tom Brady suspended for four games to get back at the Patriots. So that's not we want. We didn't want that. So they're not happy with Goodell, the owners, about the punishment for spy for deflategate. I don't. You know. I mean. Well, which is it? I mean, if it's not enough, then if it's not enough, they're not happy. But if it's too much, then they're not happy with Goodell. Sir, too. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why is New England? You brought it up. I'm not, I'm past it. Why is New England so fascinated? Let it. You've oh, won a dog, Super Bowl. You know, you've won a Super Bowl. You know you've, won a su- you've won a Super Bowl since. Why he he was heroic in the second half of the Denver game. Why you won the? Now you may not win the. You may not win the appeal, but you. That's going to be fifty fifty. But you did won the original. It's up to that one judge there, Chin, mm-hmm. uh, because it's going to be one one, and he's. Gonna sounds lead. like it. Sounds like everybody says they're going to lose two one. Who knows? The legal people have been wrong the whole time on yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. But, but, I, I, spoke, I spoke to a judge, a right. friend of mine, a lawyer, who said that the three judges. He think he wasn't sure. He thought it'd be one one. He thought Chin is a labor guy that he would rule for Brady. We'll have to wait and see. So he's got Brady winning this. He did. He had Brady winning, despite me, uh, the fact uh, that he looked bad with the. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer your question on why we're obsessed with this. But first, I want to get the, these nine. So you talked to nine owners. Well, I, I was I was with them, wasn't I? Right. No, but but no, I'm I'm interested in this. How about at the How about at the Super Bowl? When I did four or five of them on. Okay, and you talk to them off the record you know, as well? You don't, you don't think when they're sitting there for four or five minutes, I don't ask them, uh, what do you think of the Van Nuys I'm story? sure, and I, I want to know, what do they think? Do they think the punishment for Brady was too stiff? Is that they, the, think that they think that they had, well, here's what they would say. Go ahead. We're involved, well, if you, got, if you went deep into it, they want to get TV ratings. They would say to themselves, Chris, do you think we want Goodell to suspend the best player in the league, its star? 
for the first four games of a regular season, which includes a game against the Cowboys and the first opening Thursday night game of the year? But my, you my, think we want? You think we want the commission but, of the NFL? But my counter to suspend our. We got Kraft. We don't like Kraft. We got him already. We nailed him for a million dollars. And we lo- and he lost a first round pick and a third round and a third Fourth, pick. Yeah. And we made sure that Kraft did not appeal it because we all bombarded them at the owners' meetings and said, "Pop, you got no support here. Do what you got to do. You got no support. Nobody's going to back you up." So Kraft took the sword, and that was the end of it. We didn't need Brady too. We got Kraft. So you buy your Kraft. So, Kraft's a Kraft's our compatriot, not the quarterback. But here, but here, but here's my counter to that: is that Roger Goodell works for the owners. So I'm supposed to believe then that Roger Goodell, on his own, went rogue and gave Tom Brady a four game suspension, even though the rest of the owners in the league want him in for I TV am ratings. Sure. That, I is, am that, sh- that is very hard. You understand that's why? Fair. I, that, that's I mean, fair. That, that's fair. And there might be, the, and there might be a situation. You know, it's funny. How come nobody with the pay in New England complained when the general manager of the Browns was suspended a month? Because the general manager in in season during a football season is not the same as a right. quarterback missing but, four but games. But he got over text messages. But, but, I, I agree, it's a joke. I agree, it's a joke. How, but how come I didn't hear anybody? I, I, nobody because, in England talked about that. How when, come, Chris? When you're doing shows in New York, if this happened to uh, Eli Manning or Derek Jeter during the season, you think local fans? Parochial fans would care what happened in Cleveland. You know the answer to that question. Well, how, well, how, well, I, but you get the point, though. Yeah, but, I mean, but you I mean, get my I mean, point this too. Is not the, how come when the Cowboys and the Redskins were salary were, lost all that money with the salary cap? I didn't even because from it's not. About it, that. Do you think that's the same as a quarterback missing four games and a team losing a first round pick? On a third round pick. What's, what's a third uh, round uh, pick? first and a fourth? Oh, what, a fourth what, what's a stiffer penalty? Uh, you'd have to listen. Oh, Chris, a GM being suspended. It depends who the quarterback is. If, if the quarterback is Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'd well, say the freaking salary cap. What's, so. what's a stiffer it's violation? Brady. A GM being suspended for a, a month in season or Tom Brady in a first round pick? Not even close. That's the harshest penalty ever given. And Roger Goodell, by the way, uh, compared it to the 1919 Black Sox. Yeah, I. Uh, is, that, is that a little strong, would you say? Uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. How come I didn't hear anybody in New England say what a disgrace it was that Dick Berman was in was out at the Hamptons with Bob Kraft that Labor Day partying after the after the verdict? Yeah, yeah, not a good look for Berman. We said that on the air. That's a bad oh, look. Oh, it's a, dis- it's a bad look for Berman. People said that is a disgrace. You you what is your what is your what is your hatred? I had for the a Patriots? major problem with that. Dick Berman wants to run around ba- and party, with, and the fact that he's got Brady in his fantasy football thing is that true? Yes. Isn't this fantasy football team? Yeah, well, it was that particular year. It's a bad uh, look. Look, it's a totally, it's completely a bad look. But to answer, I, I'll let you go. But to wrap up uh, with the with the Patriot stuff, the reason fans are so upset is there's a draft coming up, and there's a chance. And listen, but you can miss as much as hit in the first round. But you'd agree, Belichick's done a pretty damn good job picking late in the first round, which he's been doing for 15 years. Whether it's uh, hey, whether, uh, Brady, what, he knows how to put together a football. Whether it's team. Mayo, whether it's McCordy, whether it was Chandler Jones, whether it was Logan I'd have Mankins. to go back and look, but, but you're but, right. He's but, been great. Put it this way: let's let's say it's six out of ten have been hits. That guy now, whether it's Devin McCordy or Logan Mankins or, or Vince Wilfork, these late first round picks, that guy's gone. But he's, uh, let me he's ask been you wiped question. out. Well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If Bob Kraft is so innocent, if Bob Kraft and the Patriot organization and his quarterback are so innocent, why did Bob Kraft you, take you, the penalties? You're, you're, you're going to take. You're, you're stealing exactly what I said today, which is the, they're at the owners' meetings this week. They're down in Boca Raton. Uh, Kraft should find the biggest microphone out there, stand up, and say, "Listen, we've been screwed." We're no, fighting. why, why, why won't Bob Kraft do that? Because I, I think the thing that I think that Kraft has decided that's more important. Damn it, this is this is this is a terrible look for Kraft, and I agree with you. It's more important for Kraft to be friends with Arthur Blank and Mara and these owners than to than to appease the fan base of the Patriots. He's made a decision. Or his, li- team? or his team, or his or team, or his team. Like yes, this? yes. There's a line. I, I, of sand. D- doesn't he call? Doesn't he call Brady his son? Yeah, yeah, he kisses so him on he the cheek. Could, let me get this straight. So he calls Brady his son, yet he willingly did not appeal, did not fight it. I'm with you. Went, went meekly into the night last year and said, we will accept the $1 million fine and the loss of a first or a third round pick. When his son, in his eyes, was deemed guilty, uh, was, is innocent of this, of this crime. Well, yet well, yet well, Kraft, who's, who's told, gone on and on with, he's my son, how much I love this man, everything else, yet he accepted the punishment. I'm with you. And, and if that was my son, and I knew, I don't care, I don't care, well, I don't care if uh, John Mara, I don't give a crap about John Mara, if that is my son, and I know that he was wronged, and he got, PR-wise, got, uh, and I'm the owner of the team, and he got destroyed PR-wise outside of New England, which he has, there is not a chance 
then I'm going to accept that. Here's, why did Bob Kraft accept it? Here's why. Here's, here, I think you get your timeline a little bit wrong. But, but I, by the way, I agree with you overall. I think Kraft has been terrible on this. But I'll say this. When, when he dropped the appeal, decided not to appeal, Goodell, Brady was still appealing, so Goodell upheld the four games. Kraft said subsequently, he told the Boston Herald, he said in the later press conference, he thought that by giving in and accepting the punishment from the league, that Goodell would be. Oh, right. that's a bunch of garbage. Shut I, think, up. I think it's total bullshit. That's, uh, I he, should have, total... he should have. He should have. Agreed. He should have asked Goodell the time. Now, do you want? That's now, just. That's just him protecting his rear end. That's trying bull- to, he knew I, he got grief for it. I agree. So then. he came up. So I don't want to listen to. Kraft I agree about that, that. that that reeks of total bullshit. I agree with you. Now, would you, if you're Kraft, do you go Al Davis? Do you sue the league? Hey, again, that's his son. I, I, listen, I would because that's I, his son. If that's my son, and he said it, that is my son. If that is my son, who I think is being wrongly crucified, I damn, I don't care about Arthur Blank. I don't care about John John Mara. I don't give a crap. What, my is point like, is, you won't talk to me for a couple of weeks. And my point is, we've, 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 you and I have been having this fight for a year. We'll probably do it at the Super Bowl next year. We're fighting over. I don't think there's any definitive proof. You disagree. You think a, a nickname, and you think. Uh, the fact that Bernie uh, again ge- here's the here's the key word mm-hmm. general awareness. I don't think I don't think you think Brady, but Brady. Was, I think I Brady think, was. I think Brady, as Ted Wells said in his report, was generally aware. Do you think Wells did a good job? I think Wells. Here's what I do think with Wells. I think Wells and everybody I've talked to has agreed. All your owner he buddies, is a yeah. Top flight, one of the all-time greats in criminal law. Hmm. Okay, and I, 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 I did, don't... You, did you did you know that? What the the, the owners For a quarter the, of a century? What the owners of your, the owner buddies that you talked to said he's a he's a good lawyer? No, 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 no. Uh, lawyers. I'm sure he's considered. I'm sure he's considered prosecutor, a top. Prosecutors. I mean, just a regular fan who calls up and says, "Chris, I'm a great defense attorney. Let me tell you something right now. Right. This guy is top notch." So a caller told you this? Well, right. People in the last talk few years. Callers? When I've uh, Kirk, people in the last. Are you are you disputing the fact that Ted Wells isn't good at what he does? Uh, I don't think he did a great job with this. I know he has a good reputation. I would say he's. Have a, you looked I, into I, the, I, Yes, you looked of course at, have I have. Into his reputation. Yes, he's got a great uh, what reputation. Is his reputa- what is uh, his, his reputation, reputation in the law firm? He has, a, he has a reputation within the league. The incognito thing he butchered, and this he butchered. He's an NFL puppet. I think you'd agree with that. But uh, you know, I, I don't. But uh, the, but uh, he was getting paid no matter what he came up with, Brady. Uh, he was getting paid. He, he didn't get his money. Was not he was not getting Chris, he, paid. Chris, he, went in, he, went, he went in with a tie, with a with a with a finish in his mind. He was That's going. Possible. He was you'd going. You have to ask him that. You'd the have, NFL was directing you'd have him to, you'd to have find. To ask him that. I would love. To, yeah, sure, you'd yeah. have to ask him. I think he'll be on next week on the podcast, Chris. If I have a chance to ask <laughs> I mean, him, I'll Kirk, ask him. But, but, but Kirk, you have to admit one thing. And I'll ask Adele he next time a, he calls he in too. He has an unassailable as a professional. He has an unassailable as a professional. Forget the NFL, as a criminal prosecutor. Who's been who's been in courts for a quarter of a century? He has an unassailable reputation. Can't argue it. Fine, but and I, I mean you can't. So, sorry, he's got an unassailable reputation that well, he's going to that he is going to risk for being well, a bad how, man. How, 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 how do you do with incognito? I, the, the two, two, I don't want to get into it. Well, you it. But, about yeah, Brady. But, you, but, you, but you said it's unassailable. But we're talking about Brady. We're talking I'm about, talking about outside of the talking, NFL. Yeah, but it's inside the NFL. I don't care what his record is outside the NFL. Okay, inside so the NFL. Then, this is a, this inside is a guy the who NFL, is a, it's not unassailable. He yeah. fucked up the incognito thing. It depends who you believe. Oh, that's, the, that's the crux of the argument, isn't it? Uh, it depends who you believe. All right, let's let's wrap. Let's let's finish up with what really matters. It's amazing, you guys, you love this Deflategate. Oh, it's a great story. You know that. It's a juicy story. We, we we've been away from it lately, but let's wrap and, up. And, and 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 you know you know who gets all the blame here all the time? That Players Association, who gave who gave Goodell. Oh, all they his they power. they rolled over and gave Goodell everything. They gave, they gave, and that's what this is going to be determined with these judges. And this other and did this, the CBA with this appeal right. appellate court? Did the CBA? Do they have a right? To uh, does Brady have uh, the CBA who represents Brady gave Goodell the uh, ability to judge beat arbiter? Mm-hmm. Did did Goodell uh, over did, over did uh, overreach his powers? Yeah, correct. That's the argument. Well, it, it, but here's the other thing: is you read that Wall Street Journal story last week? This idea that the players are going to get together and strip Goodell of powers that'll never happen in the NFL ever. They'll roll over again the next time they do this. This is what they do. It's just what they do. All right, I'll let you go. I love you. Coach. Thanks, doggy. See you. Okay, see you. All right, thanks again for listening to Enough About Me, another great episode with Mad Dog Russo. If you want to hear more of these episodes, the ones in the past, there'll be some more in the future. You go to weei.com, you go to the mobile app, you go to Stitcher, you go to iTunes, and when you go to iTunes, write a review. That helps us. Give us that big five-star review we need. It's going to help us get back to number one in sports and recreation. Do it. Give us the best review possible for Enough About Me.